Ah, uh, space. Hey, the group. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Geeks, and you're watching Geekcaster. Today we have in the studio. It's uh, Snow Mageddon, Davion Bussy. It feels like I'm in 1996, Northeaster Corey Davis. How y'all doing? You're watching Geekcaster, everything sci-fi, fantasy, geek culture, and geek content. Now, Davion, what are we talking about yep. today? The girl with all the gifts. Godzilla, king of all monsters. Batwoman, season two. And WandaVision, season three. No, season four. WandaVision, episode four. Episode four, sorry. <laughs> said it just fast. <laughs> that was crazy. What You're making me feel like I missed a lot there. <laughs> All right, you know what? Um, for those, we're not going to talk about that first, but when we get to WandaVision, it is a spoiler. So, um, you spoiler. know, you could um, not listen to the last 10 minutes of this broadcast. If that's an issue, all right. The girl with the the girl with all the gifts. Let's start there. That was amazing. Perfect. That was amazing. That little girl. Perfect. First of all, it takes you, you get zoomed into this world, a futuristic world where there's a pandemic of some some kind, a zombie apocalypse, and you start learning about these kids. These kids. It seems like a school, Corey, or a laboratory with a school in it. Yeah, it's more like a lab. Well, some type of outpost. It's a bunker. It's a bunker, yeah. which is based on the military base, and they have a hidden tunnel, which is underneath underground, where they basically experiment on the kids that got infected. That basically. Whoa, 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 whoa! We didn't want to spoil. Hey, hey, wait, wait, easy now. Spoilers, bro. Easy. Spoilers. Spoilers for Wandavision. Not that. You're too busy flexing. Okay. You gotta think while you flex. You just can't flex. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, but Johnny Sorry. Bravo always gets run over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, this film is great. I don't even want to say much more before this one starts slipping. <laughs> but I would say this is one of my favorite new films. What do you say, Corey? So I remember watching this film when it first came out. And rewatching it made me fall in love with this movie all over again. Um, you know when they give you this world of like this new zombie apocalypse and how this world works? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but this world seems like the most authentic uh, world they've ever created with zombies. And I was highly invested. And I forgot about the ending. The ending is the piece, the resistance of this whole film. It's so good. It's yeah. So good. It's one of those that even if we want to do a spoiler, we can't because it kind of takes a lot of things away. Yeah, there were a lot of twists and turns what? that normally what? in um, zombie series or movies that they they just said, nope, we're going to go this way. Nope, we're going to go that way. And I, I thought that was great. Yeah. I say spoiler! No. <laughs> they literally tell you every step of the way what's happening, and then they just make it make sense. And it flowed very, very well. And Glenn, hey, Glenn Coase was in that. Yes. Geeks, come here real quick. Come to the camera. Closer. Closer. Spoil it! <laughs> you, see, you see what I have to deal with? You, you see what's happening here? <laughs> All right, so what do we got next on the list there? Godzilla's. Godzilla, king of monsters. Now, I fell asleep three times watching this, Corey. I don't know how. Uh, well, I understand. This isn't a standalone, stand off alone, standalone movie. If you didn't watch the original Godzilla remake in 2014, then this movie wouldn't have made much sense. So it was made basically a continuation. And the next upcoming movie, uh, Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Kong, that's going to continue even further because they made a lot of references in this one, as well as some references in the first. And it's it's just going to be an amazing, uh, what's the what's the word? I don't want to say trilogy. What's the word I'm like thinking about, Davion? Crossover. Not crossover. When you have all these movies in in succinction, ah, it'll, it'll come to me. 
yeah, I like what they're doing with Godzilla now. They're giving respect to the old Godzilla movies as well as bringing it into the modern day era and making it make sense. Yeah. Um. Yeah, my reference to um, regarding to Godzilla and versus King Kong is. Dag, I basically lost my train of thought. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. I knew it. All that pausing for nothing. <laughs> you know, one thing I have to say about this um, Godzilla, yeah, they really stayed true to the whole point when it came with um, basically man's destroying the earth, the whole environment thing. And um, yeah, I have to say, even though things were so big and moving around and I kind of lost interest, but I have to say I do like the fact that they did stay true to the original Godzilla. They stayed true to all the different characters in all the old series, and I do like that a lot. And I am really looking for, was it Kong versus Zilla? Or Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. Godzilla oh, versus I mean, Kong. King Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus King Kong? I think it's Which Godzilla versus Kong. All right, and what I was about to reference, and it came back, geeks. I already know what you mean by you kind of was like kind of fading away because it could be because of the special effects. It does when it's too much special effects, it does messes with people. Mm. Yeah, no, it you know, so it, was, it was so big. Like you know, that, you know, the no, movie's just too big. Everything is large and big, and it was like wide shots, close shots, wide clot. You know what I'm saying? It was just and the, and the, this like, is exactly what Christopher Nolan was trying to talk about. Like when they make these big budget movies that's made for the big screen, this is not made for your everyday 32, 40 inch TV. This is 300 inch mega picture movie. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's Godzilla. It's made for big, so mm-hmm. it has to be, it has to be seen on the big screen. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I see where you're going with there. Also, it was and so dark, too. Weird. Well, of course. It's, that's how the whole setting, especially... Well, the original, no. They basically had its dark colors, but it was a little bit of light. But they wanted to make it that way, so it fits the... the I think the environment. The atmosphere, yeah. The atmosphere to make it seem like, yo, the darkness represents... Okay, you know it's casualties and destruction in the dark type setting. So I think that's where it was going. Ah, The word I was thinking about is anthology. So yeah, this is what they're building with. Yeah, I don't know how the monster, the monster universe. Yeah. What else well, is I on the list there? Uh, the one show I didn't was what episode I, or season I didn't watch is Batgirl, Batwoman season two. And you swinging your arm. <laughs> <laughs> I I must admit I didn't. I see don't it. have CW, so I can't I can't say nothing. So only season one is on HBO Max. Uh, Batwoman, and so far the yeah, world is seen, it's pretty I've good. Seen Batwoman. I've seen part one. I mean season one, but I didn't see season two. Well, tell us about season two. <laughs> I said well, I saw season one. I did. Season well, two. let 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 let. What do you think of season one? I'm con- I'm I'm curious there. Okay, season one. I really had to say it was too cartoonish, and they made. I don't know. I think the direction it was good, but the atmosphere and the environment and the story was kind of too cheesy. So the director sucked. Then that's what you're saying. Correct. But you just I said just- the director was good. No, I didn't say the director was good. He said the direction, the direction they were going with. The direction they were going with was good, but it was more the script and some of the characters that were making it like... Eh, 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 eh. I disagree. I didn't feel that way. I thought that it, it's the CW, so you're going to get a teen drama. Uh, there was a lot of kissing. <laughs> the but there's no teens. That's the thing. You have a thirty-year-old woman playing a superhero who's going against a so-called lover in season one. 
but what I mean is like the teen element. Like you get the same element in the Flash, Green Arrow, Supergirl. This is just another thing where you get that teen drama element of a CW show is what I'm talking about. And you have that feel and the, the environment and world that they made Batwoman basically thrive in. It made sense. You have Luke Fox, Lucius's Fox son. Uh, she has a reason of why she puts on the suit. And it's it's pretty good. And her with her uh, battle with Alice in the comic book is also Alice and Red Alice. Uh, that can get cheesy, but it also made sense. In some directions, you're like, oh, I didn't think they were going to go this way. It was it's an entertaining ride. It's a, it's a CW teen drama with Batwoman in it. Still, it's still I enjoyable. Really fell, I really felt that it was kind of like uh, like I I felt if they would have put it on Netflix or something and went a different direction, I think I would have been more entertained than having it on CW. Like there's shows that they have on CW that they hit that threshold of entertainment because they actually went to Oh, the team element. So I think it was like a downer to me because of the fact that there was more potential with that show than than it was presented. Yeah, I, I can see some people not liking it, but I'm one of those people that do like it, and there are reasons to like the show and watch it. Because I'm going to continue watching it. I'm going to finish season one. And when I get to season two, hopefully HBO Max starts putting out Seasons like a week or two after they air, because I think they're what to episode four of season two. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we can start getting some of those episodes on HBO Max, so we can stay uh, as current as possible. That's cool. so, yeah, yeah. HBO doesn't have season, season two. two up. So, <laughs> well, I would like to say I I saw where they were going with it when they um, started out season one. And um, once they started going too much with the um, lovey-dovey, boo-boo, kissy-kissy, CW, you know, it's got to be about relation, like love relationships. I was, same thing that made me unplug from Arrow. Same thing made me unplug from um, The Flash. I was like, all right, guys, I want my action. I want it dirty. I want my <laughs> villains. I want my villains bad. So, but that wasn't really it. What really made me really unplug the last straw was this weak wannabe kind of jokery Harley Quinn thing, which is her, like her sister. I just yeah, feel that. She, I just feel that she wasn't a good villain. Now I know that she that character already exists, but I just feel like, like what Davion was saying with the writing. I just feel like she wasn't a villain. She was just a, she was like just a cartoon villain, like. I'm not afraid of you. You're not crazy. You're just annoying. I want my villains to be bad. I thought with the... So, spoiler alert in three, two, one. I thought the <laughs> relationship that they had made sense. Because she's not like your traditional Batman villain. She's a Batwoman villain. And it, it kind of makes sense. I don't want to, like, build the whole sexist, like... I don't uh, ask like, into it, but it made sense for her dealing with all these issues and to deal with these family issues. Like she has a lot of issues that she's dealing with, and it just made sense to to keep it relevant and everything correlated. I thought, and it, it just made sense to me. So that's why I was invested. All right. Well, I, season two. Sure. Um, spoiler alert: three, two, one. The Batgirl, you know. Three. Well, everybody knows this. You watch the news. Like, well, she's gone. She, And you'll watch the show. Not a full spoiler alert, but look, she's gone. And now this beautiful sister finds the suit. And now she's wearing the suit. And it's a little bit of a journey. It's a little, like, little forced, you know, just trying to make things fit that why she would wear the suit. But I think she does a great job. I think the acting is well. You know, I think the sets are great. The costumes are great. I just feel like the um, writing needs to be a little more solid. I got to watch a little more. But um, I do like I do like the black, black woman. Um, that woman. Yeah. And um, I could I could dig it. 
I can dig it, but I do feel like the writers are just trying to make it fit too much. And um, don't rush it. If, if you want to make it fit, just do it among, like, three episodes. You don't have to, like, all right, let's yeah. hurry up and let, let, let this work, and um, then, then we're off. And I feel that's kind of right, what I'm they did. Not trying to play, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate. Now, do you feel as though they kind of forcing a black character to us so we could basically, like, go back to CW so they could be like, oh, yeah, we got a black actress playing Batwoman, so we're going to try to bring all the black audiences back to CW, even though wow. we know we get rid of well i need more information life. because i don't know if all the black people left cw so i don't know i don't know i mean that could be an angle I, d I do like the fact that um they did find a way to mention george floyd which was cool um i do like the fact that uh there was a scene where she's wearing the suit and they were like hey um i think people have realized that she's not that woman i mean she's black you know like her face like don't notice so i do like the fact that the writers weren't afraid enough to at least to do that to like okay this is the obvious we can't avoid the obvious and we can't pretend that someone that is of dark skin is not gonna talk about injustice a little different than someone else so that i have to give them props for um, but again, I gotta watch more to see where they're going with it. Um, like, but just one example, they have a guy that had plastic surgery to look like Bruce Wayne. Now, if you work for Bruce Wayne and you know that Bruce Wayne is Batman, you think anybody just changes their face and you'll think it's Bruce? Like, it was like, come on, man. And I think, Corey, this is like a conversation we had, like, stay true to comic book characters and live in the world and the rules of the world mm -hmm. like that's not gonna happen so i thought that was really corny but you know it is what it is it is what it is so now on a lighter note i know i was not a big fan of the first couple episodes of um <laughs> wandavision oh, no 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 they still suck but the last <laughs> whoa, whoa, episode whoa, 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 whoa. wait we gotta get the guns out oh, oh. But the last episode, God. I'm, I'm, I, I like it. I'm looking forward now. I like how they took a whole bunch of mess and made it work. If they took mess and made the mess seem like it was brilliant, but it, what, it in itself was not entertaining. Spoilers, spoilers. So, yeah, uh, this is the spoiler part we were talking Go about. Ahead. Three, two, one. All right. So, clearly. Clearly, we had grieving from Thor, and it only made sense we had grieving from Wanda. So everyone knows that Avengers Endgame, Vision's dead. They knew that we were going to go to this weird world, and we don't know how the aftermath was going to be. So expecting like this weird dynamic, and that's why it was so awkward. They couldn't remember why they were there or what they were doing. It's because of Wanda's doing. It's her grief, and we understand now why it was so awkward and it makes sense so even watching the awkwardness was fun to follow i i don't know like why some people didn't get that but yeah i guess that's just like regular tv and we forgot how to watch tv and watch it evolve into other things <laughs> so, so they, it was just touche touche uh, corey touché. it was just her evolving in a different light like okay this is what i want in life something like a black and white picture then it and then it e e i mean elevates to okay we're starting to see evolve like somebody evolving Color, now hold on a evolve, second everything. i see where you guys are going with it and i agree i'm not disagreeing i just feel as the episodes as they were it was such a great opportunity even just as a writer as a creative if you're gonna do like a homage to the 50s or the 60s television and then the 70s. Come on, man. Make it entertaining as if it standed by itself. Make it funny. Make it, make it good. What? You see what but I'm saying? it's all in her mind. Okay. No, 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 no. It doesn't, no, no, no. Detach yourself for a minute. Detach yourself. I, I see where you're going with it. 
And I agree of what they're trying to tell. But even within that box, it's like this. Okay, let me give you an example. All right. You do, you're, um, I don't know, I don't know, you're a magician, right? And you're in the war. And everyone dies, and you're all by yourself, right? And you're walking in the woods, right? And you're Mr. Magic Man. You can't deal with the fact that everyone's dead. So you start going to these little, you know, like these little, um, if anyone steals this idea, I'm, I'm coming for you. And like you, you start going in the past and you, and you do a 70s thing. Wouldn't you put 70s slang, 70s jokes? You might even do like a, I don't know, like an exploitation scene. But doing that scene, you would make it funny. You would make it, you know what I mean? You, you would go all out where that scene is strong and stands by itself. And that's what they didn't do. That's what they, they is a missed opportunity to make it awesome. I get what you're saying, but what we know now of this whole show is introducing us to this horror element of Marvel. I think they did a good job of blending the characters. Now, you said horror. Do you really believe that's where they're going to go with it? Yeah. With with this show, if they're introducing the horror element for the new Doctor Strange um, movie, right? So they're introducing these uh, theatrical elements right now. They're not going hardcore to the right with it. They're just introducing, and it's going to be in stages. So it's going to get worse and scary. It's just like the beginning phase. Like, don't you feel the whole Twilight Zone type feeling to this show? Like, like or the I X, feel not the I X, feel like yeah, the, yeah, um, the X file. Remember the episode they did where they were like in the circus? No, not the circus. Um, it's like a fundraiser, and yeah, the did, fundraiser um, that. I feel they really could have... See, it's all about pacing, tone, directing, and the writing. Now, if they... That would have been interesting. If they took that tone, I think, again, another missed opportunity to to take us somewhere else. They didn't achieve it. You got to think about the fans, the current fans. A lot of current fans grew up with these movies. So they know the characters in a different way than we grew up with the comic books. So you have to find that balancing act of paying homage to the people who know 50s, 60s, 70s shows and people who don't. While They they should have hired people that respected it and can pull it off. I think they did pull it off. They pulled off the story. They didn't pull off the episode. To see the difference? They did. You know, okay, you know what? Because you guys gave the same critique when it came to, like, the Marvel Universe. Like, there are a couple of the... It's arguably that um, Ant-Man 2, to some people, and some of the Thors, some of the movies in between were just throwaways. One of the biggest one, critique-wise, was um, Captain Marvel. A lot of people felt that was just a throwaway. It was just a step towards Endgame. And the thing is, and you see DC's probably doing it too, or trying to do it, Let's not be such fanboys where we're just like, oh, okay. When, okay. I don't think we're being well, no, no. fanboys. Don't, don't, don't take it personal. Take yourself out I'm of it. I'm not taking it personal. I'm, I'm just not saying that I'm I just not. feel that, like, yes, it's a piece of the puzzle, but let's not pretend every piece is a masterpiece. You know what I'm saying? No, we're not saying that, but saying. the whole point. The whole point. You want to go for it? Yeah. yeah. Some things can be done better. Some things are done. That's all I'm saying. Up. Yeah. And and we get that. But the purpose right now is still building. And I think that it's still enjoyable. It's still a fun watch. And now it's just making more sense. And I like the ties that they threw in with, what's her name, Monica Rambo, And that gives yeah. you the time element of how much time has passed. The tie-ins now, are great. Yes. And then... Once you know what's interesting? I think they wrote that episode first and went backwards. It's possible. It makes perfect because sense. Because that, that episode was so strong in comparison that I'm like, I really think they wrote that first. They knew where they wanted to go with it and then said, all right, all right, we need to like build up to this. But I think that's because it's more Marvel than the other. Interesting. Right. I, so, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. 
And I think that's what's throwing you off is the fact that, oh, they could have done more with episode one. They could have done more with episode two. They could have done more with episode three. But when episode hit, episode four hit, you're like, oh, my God, this is awesome. And you're like, I didn't say all that. Are... <laughs> I'm just saying it's good. No, it, it brought you back. Let's put it like that. It brought you back. Yeah, yeah because the writing was really good. Yeah. But it's they just learned that they can't. Huh? They they learn from Age of the Shield, so like let's bring characters back that they know, and let's make it make sense. <laughs> yeah. So you had more Captain Marvel, Ant Man, and like this new WandaVision world, and it's it's just perfect. And we're gonna get more of that. I I yeah. first. I'm I'm gonna... I'm confident if they stay on this path, I'm gonna be excited. So ladies and gentlemen, you check it out. You make the call, and hit us up. Leave some comments. Um, if you're checking it out on uh, YouTube, cool. Geekcaster.com, cool. Geekcaster on IG, cool. Geekcaster on Twitch, cool, cool. Yeah. All right, uh, give everyone your uh, social medias there, guys. Yep. I'll let Corey go first. Yep, yep, yep. I always do it. Yep. You can find me and Pickle Rick on all the things at I am GT3. You can find me on. On Davion Bussey and all the things. And also, Jamal Williams, yo. Yeah. Oh, where can they find you at? Uh, Geeks, you okay? No, well, I, you know what I mean? That's his thing. He says all the things. That's a Corey thing. <laughs> you can't say all the things. <laughs> that's not nice. That, that's his tagline. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, we do. But you didn't get a copyright yet. I have the evidence. He does have the evidence. (laughs) Yep. All right, guys. Thank you so much for checking out Geekcaster. And we will continue to do what we do. Yep. Trickle Rick. Recycle dance.